Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a Xbox One S which was picked up on scrap. My brother-in-law is a licensed scrap collector and that means that he drives around picking up scrap that people have thrown out and then selling it for cash. And basically most of the stuff that he picks up is generally not worth fixing. It's stuff like old pieces of steel, broken microwaves, TVs where the LCD has been smashed and things like that. But occasionally he comes across a goodie and today's one of them days. So he came up this morning and he brought me this. It's a broken Xbox, well, I'm assuming it's broken. It's an Xbox One S. It looks a little bit rough around the edges. I don't actually know what's wrong with it, but I think it might be liquid damaged because if we take a look, if, if it'll come across, there you go, you can see it. So there's something all over the top of it and also all over the bottom of it as well. Now, this wouldn't have been outside for long because there's, you know, seven, eight, nine different people collecting scrap in this area. So it couldn't have been out there long. So I don't think it would have got any kind of uh, damage or anything like that through the weather because it would have probably been picked up by someone else before he got to it. So hopefully we're going to be able to fix it. It might be a case where, you know, just the hard drive's failed and someone's just thrown it out and bought a new one or things like that. But yeah, we live in a throwaway society today and hopefully I can get this fixed and make a little bit of money in the process. So if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me in any way, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing to my channel absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything if you've got Amazon Prime, but it does massively help me out. For everyone that subscribes on Twitch, I get $2.50 or something like that. And yeah, it, it helps me to buy equipment. It helps me to keep making these videos and things like that. So I would really, really appreciate it. Another thing that helps me to make videos is a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay, in association with Mercer Electronics, are hosting their fifth PCB design contest. And this is their biggest design contest yet. By heading over to the link in the video description, you can enter your PCB designs and win a whopping $1,500 in cash, a $200 coupon, and a Raspberry Pi 4. Two second prize winners can win $1,000 cash, a $100 coupon, and of course the Raspberry Pi Model 4 and three third place winners will win $500 cash, a $50 coupon, and an Arduino Mega 2560 Rev3. To learn more or to enter your project, simply head over to the link in the video description. Now back to the video. All right, so before we do anything, let's just take a quick visual inspection. It looks like someone has opened this. So we've got some damage around here. And also, like I said, it looks like there may be signs of liquid damage on this. So I'm going to pop some gloves on in a second. But we've got some marks here which look like it could be water. A few scuff marks. Someone's just literally thrown this on the pavement, I think. But, yeah, overall, it's not too bad. We've got a dent here as well. So it looks like it's definitely been thrown on the pavement. Don't know what to expect with this, but hopefully we can fix it. And if we can't, then we might get some usable parts out of it as well. And it also makes an interesting video. So it's win-win. So task number one, put on some gloves. Like I said, I don't know where this has been. So I'm going to put gloves on just for, well, my own protection, pretty much. Don't really want to be touching, uh, well, I don't know what's happened to it. So I don't know what I could be touching, to be honest. But the next thing I'm going to do is just... Attempt to power this on and just see what actually happens with it. Okay, so let's have a look. So my switches have stayed on, so the RCD hasn't kicked in. It turns on. Hmm. Okay. There's no disc in there. Let's just have a look. Let's plug in the HDMI cable and see what happens with the... Uh, display. I really do wonder why this has been thrown out. Okay, that port is very loose. I am wondering why it's been thrown out though. Is it really just a port? Okay, so I've got this connected up to the capture card and it's not actually doing anything. So you can see in the top corner that I've got the cable plugged in. I'm just going to give it a little bit, little bit of a wiggle, a little mess around and just see what actually happens. 
Is it going to give me a display? Doesn't appear so. Okay. So I'll try it on the TV just in case my capture card's playing up. It looks like we might have a blank screen here. So basically it's coming up no signal on the capture card, but on the TV it is actually recognising an input by the look of it. Whoops, that's the wrong... Uh... Ugh, go away. I'll change my batteries when I'm good and ready. Thank you. Yeah, so it is actually displaying in 1980 by 1920x1080. Uh, so you can see there that it's got the resolution. It's actually showing us 1080p input, but it's just not displaying anything. So it's just a black screen, no image. If I unplug that, it should come up any second now in the top corner. Come on. There you go. Okay, yeah, so it's actually displaying, but it's just displaying a blank screen. Yeah, again, blank screen, no display. All right, well, the HDMI port does look rather feel a little bit dodgy, so is that really the only reason that it's been thrown out? I don't know. Oh, well, let's have a look. So let's be nosy at the inside of this, shall we? Okay, we've got a screw missing. Ah, we've got some corrosion here, look. So can you see these screws where it's discolored? And that one, and that one. So, yeah, I think we have had some liquid damage on this. Uh, and I'm going to say, based on the case, it's probably recent as well. And now it's the moment of truth. Let's see what's going on inside on this, shall we? It turns on, so that's a good thing. Might need a bit of a service, but I'll do that every time I open up a console. 500 gig hard drive, okay. Cool. Fine. Could have been a terabyte. That would have been better. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. And I will take it. Okay, we've got a bit of rust here as well. Never seen that before. Look at that. Have a closer look at that in a minute. Alright, let's just give it a quick visual inspection. So the one interesting thing, like I said, is that I found some rust on here. Look, that's not a normal thing to happen. That doesn't generally happen, but... Evidently on this one it does, so we might end up having to replace the disk drive depending on how bad it's got inside the drive. But for now, I'm just going to disassemble the console, like take the uh, heatsink off, so as I can take a look around the APU and things. And also, when I put it back together, I'd need to replace the thermal paste anyway, so yeah, there we go. I have got some X clamp tools, and as a matter of fact, I actually sell them on my eBay, but I keep losing my own for some reason. I'll leave a link in the video description, by the way, to my eBay page. A little bit of corrosion there around that ground plane, but that's fine. That's not anything to really worry about. Ooh, dust bunnies, lovely. I'll save those for breakfast tomorrow. And that one. There we go. Enough joking around, let's just take a look and see if we've got any kind of liquid damage on the board. So I'm just going to give it a visual inspection with my eyes and just see if I can see anything out of the ordinary. I'm not really seeing anything in terms of any kind of signs of liquid damage. So I think it might have just been superficial to be honest. So that's good I suppose. But we've definitely got a display issue. So I think it might have been thrown out for a display issue. So when I said that it felt loose, the reason for that is by the look of it down to the fact that this port is split. So see that there? So it's meant to look like this one here. This one's a HDMI input port. It's meant to look like that, but this one, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap in it. So the reason that the cable feels loose, so if I just try and plug this in now, the reason that the cable feels loose is because the cable isn't actually making a contact properly with the port. So if you look here, there's two little grooves. And those little grooves are supposed to line up with the grooves on the cable. So as when you put the port in, it, these two grooves, there's pins inside there and they bite on the cable. Like that, did you hear that click? I hope that comes through. But it bites on the cable and it locks it in. Whereas because this one's split apart, it's not doing that. You could, of course, just bend it back. 
if you don't have any kind of micro soldering tools you could bend it back and try and reshape it but i'd rather not do that i'd rather just replace it because i've got the tools i've got the ports it's only going to take a few minutes but it looks like this is a factory port it looks like it's never been removed so that's good so yeah let's get this under the microscope and i'm going to replace that port and if it still don't work then we've likely got an issue with either this chip here and this chip here or this chip here rather or both you could have both but let's see, let's pop it under the scope. Okay, so I can show a closer look here at this port. So you can see here on this one, it's perfectly straight. You've got them clips in place. And then this one, the clips have obviously moved over slightly because this port is, like I said, split. And that is the reason why it's not stayed in. So I'll get that port changed. So to remove the port, I literally just set my hot air at 480 degrees Celsius. Uh, 40 no 60 percent airflow sorry and literally just hover the hot air underneath the port now what that's going to do is it's going to melt the solder and allow me to pull the port off so that's not quite ready yet i'll just wait for this solder to go molten i'm looking at the ground legs and yep that's starting to go molten and give it a few more seconds here and give it a nudge and now I can lift and there you go no special skills required so next what I'm going to do is just add something called flux and flux is a chemical which is designed to help solder to flow and this is a brand new tube so I haven't put a needle on it yet needle nozzle whatever you want to call it so i haven't put a needle on it yet so basically it's a little bit awkward to use usually i've got the needle on there and it just comes out nice and smooth but unfortunately at the minute i just haven't put one on because i'm lazy so yeah that's the answer to that one so let's just replace the solder that's on here now with some leaded solder i say replace i mean mix and that'll lower the melting temperature for when I put the new port back on. Make sure that mixes nice and evenly. There we go. Beautiful. So that's all the solder replaced there. I'm just going to heat this up just to remelt that flux. It does burn pretty easily, especially when you've got your soldering iron set at 450 degrees Celsius. Okay, there we go. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a scrub with some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9% .9 and a cotton swab. Doesn't have to be perfectly clean at the minute because I'm going to be cleaning it again properly before I finish up. So I'll clean it a little bit just to get rid of the excess flux what was there, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm actually going to clean this by scrubbing it as well because there's a little bit stuck around here so I'll scrub it with a brush it doesn't have to be perfect but I just want to get it from between the caps and resistors and then let's give it a dry just evaporate the rest of that IPA there we go and then what I'm going to do is just add some more flux and then I'm going to grab a brand new replacement port you can buy the replacement ports from AliExpress or if you only need one you can get them from eBay but they were just a little bit more expensive from there. So brand spanking new Xbox One S port and as you can see there's not meant to be a gap there. So the way that I'll reinstall this is literally exactly the same method as I used for removing it and that's to heat up from the bottom until I see the solder become molten and then I'm just going to drop the port in place. So the heat will transfer through the board and it'll melt, melt that solder pretty quickly actually. I'll keep it at 480 degrees Celsius for these, it's not a big deal, it's not a sensitive component. I'll give, give that a couple more seconds just to completely melt and I'm going to press down on it as hard as I can without moving the board and then move the heat away. And then that will just solidify and it will all set into place. And then it should be soldered. 
give him wiggle and nice that's set so the reason i use the drop method is purely because if i use the normal method of removing all of the solder from the ground holes and then dropping the port in sometimes you don't get enough solder to flow through whereas if you melt the solder that's in there and then push the port through it'll push through and the solder will flow all the way through it so it's a much more effective method and it's probably easier as well to be honest so I'll move the board back onto the desk properly and then I'm just going to inspect these pins and just see if they are soldered or if they're going to need touching up with the iron to be honest I'm probably going to touch them up with the iron anyway okay so those pins are solid but I'm a little bit fussy when it comes to solder joints and these look a little bit boring and dull so I like to just touch them up a little bit as if I was caressing a nice woman so I'll just grab the soldering iron with a little bit of fresh solder and just one by one I'm just going to go over these pins and now they look absolutely beautiful all I'm doing is just scrubbing the port get all of the excess flux out of there and then I can come in with a fresh cotton swab and just make sure it's nice and clean I like to leave a nice clean board behind when I work on stuff and that looks perfect absolutely perfect no bridges all of those pins are nicely soldered and now I'm pretty much ready to test this so like I said I like to leave a nice clean surface when I work on them and if you look at the back I'll give it a scrub there as well but if you look at the back we've got plenty of solder on those joints as well and that does travel all the way through the board to the other side so we should be good there but I do need to just apply some fresh thermal paste never apply thermal paste while the old stuff is still down I have seen that before and it is really really annoying to see I'm just going to break it up from around these caps this bit isn't necessary actually breaking in between the caps and things as long as the die is clean and you can put fresh thermal paste on the die you don't need to do this it's just that I like to like I said clean it all up properly if I'm going to do a job I'm going to do it right even if it is just for fun to make a YouTube video I'll still lead by example I might not know how to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste like Tronic Fix does but I do know how to apply the best damn thermal pasta that money can buy so we're going to apply probably an imperfect amount and it's going to be good and before I actually put the heatsink back on I just need to give it a quick clean there's a bit of dust around here and there we go so dust free but I do still need to clean off the thermal paste off the back just to make sure that it's nice and clean so I'll just give this a scrub and get rid of all of that and just like magic she's done so that's ready to go back on so I'll pop that on there like so and there we go so I'm going to test this by assembling it just outside the case just for now just to make sure that it works before I put it back together because if it don't work when I put it back together then I'm going to need to change the HDMI encoder and or the ESD boost IC so that's the HDMI encoder that's the ESD boost IC so I'll need to change those if it still doesn't work most likely the HDMI encoder it's not very often the boost IC actually fails so the console in general was in really good condition so that even the power supply has not got that much dust around it and I will brush it down but there really wasn't that much dust in this it hasn't seen much use I don't think I think it might have been dropped unless the damage to the case happened when they actually threw it out so same with the disk drive there's a little bit of rust on the disk drive I will test it and make sure that it actually works though okay so this is how it would be if it was inside the case obviously with the panels on as well but this is how it would be inside the case and that just saves me having to screw everything down I can just plug it all in and 
Oh, that's better. That is so satisfying. And now it doesn't just fly out on me. But that is so much more satisfying. Okay. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh. Wait, what? Uh oh. Hmm. What is going on now? That worked. And now it's a beep on beep off. What? That worked fine until I put it back together or until I took it apart. So is that why? Is it an intermittent issue? Hmm. Okay, there's definitely nothing wrong with the HDMI area. And I haven't caused any damage. Okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I haven't caused any damage to this. Or at least, not from what I've seen. I'm wondering if that's why it's been thrown out. Could it be because it's got an intermittent beep on beep off issue? Or well, something just not connected right? Okay, that's really, 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 really weird. I think something might have been temporarily shorting out, maybe. There was something on the HDMI port, some sort of debris of some sort, but... I thought it was thermal paste. I brushed it away and now it's turning on. We'll see. I'm just going to connect everything else back up. Okay, now it's working. Hmm. How very odd. Oh, that's so satisfying, though. May have just been either something not connected up quite right or a temporary short or something like that. I don't know. But it seems to be okay now. But it is really, really confusing, though. Hmm. Couldn't find my remote then. Thought I might have to get a purple seat. We can't have that, can we? Okay, still no signal. In fact, now it's pure no signal and not just a black screen. Hmm. Interesting. So, it's gone from turning on but not displaying to a beep on beep off and then from a beep on beep off to turning on but not displaying with no signal instead of a black screen. If I was the owner, I would have probably thrown it out as well. I don't know what to think. Oh, hang on. Now it's a black screen again. Hmm. Now it's in 1080p. <laughs> okay, let's try changing that HDMI encoder. But yeah, as I say, if I was the owner, I would have probably thrown it out on the pavement as well. And then quickly ran, ran across apologising and picking it up again. So yeah, this is what I brushed away. It was literally just bits of thermal paste. Unless there was a temporary short somewhere, maybe underneath the board or something. But that's what I brushed away from the port. So this is the HDMI input port. I'll just gather that up. But thermal paste is definitely not conductive. 
So this is the HDMI encoder. Its part number is SN75DP159. And I'm going to replace it with a TDP158. So again, because I'm just removing a component that's, you know, I don't care what happens to it. I'm removing it at 480 degrees Celsius, which makes it a little bit quicker. But when I replace the port in a second, I'll be at 440 degrees Celsius, just lower the temperature a little bit. Did I say port? I meant encoder. So I've got a brand new TDP-158. And by the way, the chips that I sell are the exact ones I use. And they are genuine chips, direct from manufacturer. So if you do, if you do need some of these, you can check out my eBay, or you can get in touch with me on Discord as well, and I can provide them cheaper off eBay. So that's slightly misaligned by the look of it. So I'm going to just realign it. Alright, let's add some more flux here and then I can just run over with the iron and then I'll just give it a quick inspection. I think it may slightly be misaligned again though, so I might have to remove the chip and reet in the pads because surface tension doesn't seem to want to take it in. I do want to just point out as well that it could have been the fact that the encoder is faulty that causes a beep on beep off. It's always possible. Just give that a quick inspection. That looks pretty good to me. That looks fairly aligned. Pour a bit more OPA there. And there we go. The IPA will evaporate itself. Don't worry about that. That's working, it's turning on. I'll say it's working, I don't know if it is actually working. It might still be faulty. Plug it in. So satisfying to plug, hear that click. Is it going to display? Nope. Hmm. So it wasn't the encoder. So the hard drive could be bad as well. Let's just wait a minute and see if it goes back to that black screen, because it could be just the fact that the hard drive is not loading properly. I probably should have checked that first, actually, to be honest. But let's just check the hard drive, and if not, if the hard drive is good, then I'll probably end up replacing that encoder again. You know, it could be, it could be that the encoder just got damaged with heat because I did reflow it a few times. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking hard drive now, to be honest. And yeah, it's gone to a black screen. So after about a minute or two, it does go to a black screen as if it's trying to load it. Uh, we could try and load it into safe mode. So to load it in safe mode, I'm going to press the sync and power it on. And I'm going to wait for a second beep. Come on. Hmm, it's not going into safe mode. Let's try... I'll flick that off. Let's try eject, sync and power. And then let's press and hold and wait for it to beep. Okay, that I think has gone into safe mode. It hasn't given me a second beep though. And it's not displaying anything. Let's just quickly try... Another hard drive. I know this is in the wrong caddy, but let's just try another hard drive quickly. And if it works, then I'll pop it into the correct caddy. Same connectors. This is from a 1X. But it's the same connectors. So let's just see if it boots into safe mode or if it boots onto a, a green screen. That <laughs> It was never the, the retimer. 
I mean, the good news is it's been done. I mean, it might have needed doing, and the HDMI port definitely needed doing, so, yeah, it doesn't really matter. A few pounds for an encoder, it's not too bad. So, yeah, let's get this changed into the right caddy. Looks like it's doing a factory reset there. It might come up with an E10, yeah, E106, I was going to say. Um, yeah, so it's going to need reinstalling, so I'm going to need to install OSU1, but that's fine, I can do that. That's not an issue. Don't worry about unplugging that like that, we will just shut it down. So this is going to have a one terabyte in it then, by the look of it. I could put an SSD in it, but it's kind of pointless. Okay. So we'll get rid of that hard drive. Pop that there. Okie doke. So now I'm going to grab a copy of OSU1, which I've recently updated on a USB. So you can download this from the Microsoft website, and there are some instructions there as well. So I'm going to turn on my controller. And let's sync that up. Work. I said work. Ha. Controller got scared. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to troubleshoot. And then I'm going to select offline system update. And uh, what that will do is just reinstall the software and basically reset everything to factory and allow this hard drive to be used in this console. So nice and simple. We might end up with the Xbox One X boot logo, though. <laughs> but does it really matter? At the next update, it will get replaced anyway, so it's not a major issue. So I'm going to let this run. It's going to take around about five minutes. I'll just let it run, and hopefully it installs everything and everything works okay. There we go. Done. So, yeah, that's gone through. Absolutely fine. So now I can run through the setup and make sure that everything... Is up to date and working. So obviously I'll skip this because I need to log into my account and things. So yeah, other than that, we're pretty much good to go. And 4K. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. Works in 4K and we are Gucci. And there we go. So I'm not seeing any messages on the dashboard that says anything about the console being banned or anything like that. So it should be all good. We're working in 4K. And as you can see, works on the wireless network. And yep, it's registering as a one terabyte as well. So all good. Okay, so final thing to do then is just to install a test game and just make sure that it all works. So let's pop that in there. It takes in a disc, is it going to read? Yes, it does. So, there, yep, keeps moving on, mate. But, yep, it's installing FIFA, which means everything's working. Fantastic. So, I do already have a plan for this. I am supposed to be replacing a motherboard for a customer. I do have some boards, but... This one's already out the case, so I can just drop the customer's case onto this, and it means that I can get rid of this tatty old case that this came with. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I've just got a free Xbox, and all it cost me was a port and a hard drive, which is fantastic. So, winner, winner. We've saved one from the scrap heap, literally this time, because it was literally going to scrap. And, uh, yeah, everyone's a winner, except the person who threw it out. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. And if you do want to organise a repair, you can head over to my website, consolefix.co.uk. There's a link in the video description to that where you can book in a repair if you've got a console that you want me to fix for you. I'm happy to take a look. Obviously, you've got to pay me some money. But yeah, uh, happy to take a look if you do want your console fixed by me as well. And if you do want to support me in any way, there's a Patreon link in the video description. You can support me over there. 
There's a join button just below the video and that's located conveniently right next to the subscribe button. So if you want to become a channel member and support me that way you can. That's a obviously a monthly, monthly fee but it really does massively help me out. And also you can head over to Twitch if you've got Amazon Prime. You can head over there and become a Prime subscriber absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything if you've got Amazon Prime but it does massively, massively help me out. So with that being said that is going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching and until next time I'll see you later. Bye for now.